The seeming collapse of Nigeria's educational subsector at the tertiary levels on account of unending disruptions to the academic calendar due to incessant industrial actions by the academic union is quite frightening. Apart from the gradual loss of faith in the country's educational system, there has been an upsurge in crime rate, which has impacted negatively on the nation's economy. This is a direct consequence of students loafing around with nothing to do. On this episode of Smart Data, we shall be showing you what Governor Ifani Okoa's administration is doing differently to change the narrative to avoid the plague that has become an abattoir at the federal government levels and how the various tertiary institutions in the state are having a better deal under his tutelage. My name is Evelyn Ocheke. Please stay with us. Higher education is a critical component of human development worldwide. It provides not only the high-level skills necessary for every labor market, but also the essential training for a catholicity of personnel. It is these trained individuals who develop the capacity and analytical skills that drive local economies, support civil society, teach children, lead effective governments, and make important decisions which affect the entire society. University impact on the society as a result of researches which has been established, put into practice, that eventually becomes the basic prototype for manufacturing and development of human society. <laughs> Mindful of this fact, the Delta State Government, under the leadership of Governor Ifanyokoa since 2015, has initiated and implemented policies to make tertiary education function better, as well as building new infrastructures to accommodate the ever-expanding education needs of young Deltans. No society can develop without education. It is obvious that only a person with a lion heart that can wake up in the morning and send me to three universities. I give that to the governor for having the yearning of Deltans looking for admission all over Nigeria University and they can't get. JAM cannot admit half of the population apply to it every year. So the surplusity, where do you keep them? This was informed His Excellency the decision to go right and see the three central districts educationally empowered. So for expanding the educational landscape for Deltans and Nigeria at large is indeed very credible legacy to leave behind. With the recent addition of three new universities, Delta State arguably has the highest number of publicly owned higher institutions anywhere in Nigeria. And despite these daunting numbers, the government of Governor Fanyokoa has remained committed to ensuring even allocation of resources to ensure they run optimally. I must use this opportunity to commend the Delta State Government, led by our able executive governor, Senator Dr. Ifain Ato Okoa. But I have never seen a man that multitasks, apart from managing this big state, he has time for institutions like this, ensuring that these three universities which he created in addition to that of Abraka are all running full steam. That opinion to set up or upgrade the existing institutions into university status is a very good one. 
only existing university then, the Delta State University of Abraka, was not enough to take care of the teaming number of students who were subscribing into the university. So it became a thing of concern to government that additional universities has to be set up. And it's a good, a good one. I want to thank our great governor for upgrading this institution from the Polytechnic to the university now. And for the other two universities has also created. It's a real landmark project has done in this state for our children that are yearning for education. I want to thank him especially for that. Smart Delta Media Crew recently embarked on visits to these ivory towers to ascertain the true state of development and interventions of the okoa led administration. Smart Delta. Our first stop was at the Delta State University, Abraka. We proceeded to first have a chat with the Vice Chancellor, Professor Andy Eguenga who gave us a breakdown of the contributions of the Okoa-led government that has aided growth and development of the institution. His Excellency, the visitor to the university, Dr. Ato Ifani Okoa, created the right environment for the university to help itself. Conducive environment is important because the university should be able to complement funding from the state government. The state government is not supposed to be giving us everything, but they have given a situation where we can interact with our students, with the community, and the society at large and reach what we call more competitive economic fees that can help improve the funding of the university. And because of that, our capacity to carry out internal projects has increased. For the first time, we have seen the, the roads constructed purely from IGR, internally generated revenue. We have opened up the university, changing the environment and building tangible projects. Speaking further on the continuation of academic activities despite the ongoing nationwide strike action by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, the Vice Chancellor shed more light on how the state government under Akawa's watch has remained committed to meeting the university's needs and demands. Hence, the academic activities were not disrupted. ASU struggles, we all identify with it. What you have in the university system, the fact that it is a system that is standing today, is largely because of the struggle of ASO to make sure that infrastructure and all these things are addressed. They have been addressed to a very good extent in Delta State University and then institutions in Delta State. And then my colleagues think that if a lot of the issues ASO is agitating for, for example, end allowances, revitalization, funding, the salaries that was agreed, that is what is being paid here. So when you have a set of maybe five issues with the federal government, and four of them are already settled in Delta State University, I believe that my colleagues met and felt that there's no need to be part of that struggle because we should stand as an example of where it is working. And I'm happy because it has given us stability. It has allowed us to run an uninterrupted uh, academic calendar, and then it's making Deltans happy and all the credit for that goes to the state governor. Afterwards, our team, in company of the Director of Physical Planning, architect Mike Asiafa, went round to see for ourselves some of the recently completed and inaugurated infrastructures, including internal roads and faculty building complexes in the school. Some students we met on campus like Franklin Ogude, Favor Igini, and a few others counted their blessings for undisrupted academic activities in their school, unlike some of their unfortunate counterparts. Some of the students also attested to enjoying upgraded infrastructures and a conducive academic environment. Those who was not like this in years before now, they didn't have a lot of buildings, but now you see infrastructures, there are buildings everywhere and then educational system is advanced now, better than before. There are some facilities we have access to that some persons who got from this school a few years before now did not have access to. I'm actually really glad that those who put us on the strike, there were no parts of them that school have been going on because I have a brother. He got admission into uni at the same time as I am. I am in 200 level now, but he's still in 100 level because of you know, the ongoing strike. I'll tell the state government a very big thank you that we are still be able to carry on our studies and everything. I'm happy about the fact that we're still in session, but my heart goes out to those people that are not in session. Like I feel bad for them. I know of some people that were in school before me and I'll eventually be graduating before them. I'd like to say a big thank you to the state government for making sure that class goes on as usual and without interruption in the class schedule. By making sure that the demand of also under Delso has 
being provided and everything has been how it's supposed to be. Another higher institution doing well in the state is the new University of Delta, Abo. The upgrade of this institution to a university, amongst others, remains one of the legacy accomplishments of the governor in the higher education sector. I hereby admit you to... Recently, the school held its matriculation ceremony for over 2,000 Pioneer students. Addressing the students at the event, the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman Board of the Governing Council, Professor Emmanuel Wanze, didn't fail to acknowledge the efforts of the state government towards the growth of education in the state. On behalf of Governing Council, I would like to appreciate our amiable governor, Senator Dr. Ifan Yokoa, for his moral, spiritual, and financial support. When they say that the man is indefatigable, truly, your governor and my governor is very much indefatigable. It is a testimony that square pairs were put in square holes. I warmly beseech you to remain steadfast in your developmental struggles. We are indeed proud of you all. For some of the matriculants, it was a dream come true. They expressed their joy and gratitude to the governor for not only expanding access to university education, but also ensuring an enabling environment for teaching and learning to take place. I actually feel excited and happy though, because we are doing our matriculation. It's a thing of joy. I'm giving Unidel 80% in terms of their infrastructures and facilities. It's a new school, but they're actually doing very well. Their facilities are here and they are still bringing more facilities. Yeah, I'm really happy. After trying it so many times, like to get into the university, I'm finally in the university and actually matriculating. It's a nice idea that they brought in more investors because the high number of students that were applying to um, Delsu, because that was the only um, state in owned university in Delta State. So, as they made new universities, it's actually nice because it's going to give other people the privileges like to go into the university and experience higher institution also. Bringing more universities now is a great deal. You can easily go to any university and study rather than going very far. So I'm so happy that we got to do this match. I'm very happy. Some parents of the students like Mr. Kindness Odigili and Mrs. Omaini Kudaris who were on ground to celebrate with their awards on the occasion of their matriculation commended the governor's drive to better the educational system in the state especially with the recent addition of more universities. It's a school with class, it's a school with standard, and also a school with vision. Those that are going to graduate from this school, sure they will do well because one, the infrastructure is there, the lecturers are also there, and the consciousness of security is also here in Delta State. So those attending this school, they have greater benefits. I'm really impressed. This is my first time here. Coal government has done really great. This school looks even better than some of the private schools where we paid millions. On another visit to the University of Delta, Abo, we captured several ongoing projects at different levels of completion. I was happy when I heard the news that the Fourth College of Education, Agbo, has now been made a university. The school environment is good, it's okay, and very, very conducive for learning for the state government. A very big thank you for bringing a university to Agbo. Finally, I am in my finest. God has been faithful to us. Yes. Final year, brother. <laughs> yes, <so. laughs> and do you know there are lots of things Governor Kuwa is doing differently? Uh, well, for me, I wouldn't just say a lot of things. Um, in my own opinion, I would say Governor Kuwa is doing everything differently. Do you want to talk about um, infrastructures? Is it health sectors, agriculture, human empowerment, education? You want to talk about? No, don't even talk about any other thing for now. Let's talk about education. You know, as you can see, I'm in my final year now. Hey, check uh, out. Uh, why are you sounding as if now that you did final year now? What about us? <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. Now, if not for Governor Kowa's impute to the educational sector in Delta State, forget about it. By, by now, now, you forced the hundred level. <laughs> <laughs> After one strike into another strike. <laughs> Yo, now you understand what I'm talking about now. Do you know, a lot of people don't know that Delta State University is a member of ASU. Yes, 
they don't know because we are not part of the strike. And why do you think we are not part of the strike? If ASU makes any demand, this Okowa administration makes it available. Oh yes, the Delta State government has ensured that most of the demand by ASU are met. Delta State has the highest numbers of universities in this nation. And Governor Okowa is still improving on infrastructures, also upgrading old facilities. Taking care of staff's welfare as well. Indeed, Governor Okowa cares about our future. Smart Delta. At the Delta State University of Science and Technology, Ozoro, the defunct State Polytechnic now upgraded to the status of a university. Our first impression was good, following the serene environment conducive for academic pursuits. Our team had a chat with the Vice Chancellor, Professor Obore, who brought us up to speed with recent developments in the school, courtesy of Governor Kora's leadership. The governor has been so helpful. He has improved so much on the existing facility. But since its conversion to a university, to meet National University Commission standard, we talk of buildings, state-of-the-art administrative building, the best you can find in any university. If you visit the department, you'll be surprised. You see the state-of-the-art equipment everywhere. Not only that, you can see a lot of road networks that have been constructed by the government. So much has been done within the last one year. The governor has not relented. He has assured us that whatever we need, we should let him know and will give us approval accordingly. He highlighted various areas the state government intervened to make sure the university is not lagging behind in terms of funding, infrastructural upgrade and accreditation provision of facilities and staff remunerations. We have a lot of them who are proceeding to UK to upgrade their certificates, to upgrade their knowledge. The state government has a special location to ensure that academic staff are always on training to update their knowledge to meet with the current development globally. We were taken on a facility tour and we saw firsthand the massive upgrade that has taken place in the school within a short time. We captured some of the newly constructed as well as upgraded and equipped structures like the library, ICT, faculty buildings and many others. Some of the students and staff of the institution further voiced their thoughts about government's drive to provide a well-rounded education. They also lauded government's efforts towards the massive upgrade of facilities in the school. I can see for myself and my fellow mechanical engineering students that our level of reason, our knowledge is a top-notch here in our school. We are being taught well. The equipment here, such as late machine, drilling machine, we are taught. So what we are taught is what we use to produce the tomato grinding machine. So we say thank you to Governor Ifayokova for bringing these lecturers and professors to teach us well. I feel very happy. First of all, I would like to thank Senator Dr. Ifaye Okoa for this great opportunity you have given to us. Because students will now be able to come and with a good grade, first of all. When I found out that um, I'm going to come for Polytechnic, I was not really happy. But finally, Senator Dr. Ifaye Okoa gave us this great opportunity and changed his school to a university. Infrastructurally, the university now has been greatly improved. You can see from the engineering faculty now. And see what he has done. It's a great rehabilitation he has done here. And for our staff area too, for the end of the month, salaries are paid. Our great governor is doing well. The beauty of this university is that one, it has upped the game of every academic staff. And in terms of infrastructure, facilities are being upgraded to top notch to meet the demand of the 21st century of a university that actually what the status. Our story would not be complete without a mention of the Dennis or Sadebe University Asaba. The institution has, in the course of time, also made great progress with support from the state government. In terms of facilities, our Faculty of Agriculture is undergoing massive reconstruction. Faculty of Environmental Sciences is completed except for the two theatres that are left. The gate of the university is another legacy you can look at. We couldn't have achieved all this without the enormous support 
and its tenacity to ensure that we succeed. I can say unequivocally that Senator Dr. Ifaya Ato Okowa has demonstrated eloquently well for the living to see and the dead to hear about it. We went round some of the ongoing and completed infrastructural projects to ascertain the readiness of the institution to take on the task of producing quality students. At the ongoing construction of the Faculty of Agriculture complex, we met with the site engineer who spoke to us on the level of work done and expected date of delivery. This is the faculty project, the uh, Faculty of Agriculture, contains offices and uh, laboratories. Then it's for lecture theatres and two offices up there too. 500 capacity lecture theatre too. By the end of September, we should be through with finishing. If you go back, you, you will see that the roof has already started. Both the Woody members has commenced already on this particular one. With the school fully in session, we were able to interact with some students on campus. And this is what they had to say. Because of the new three universities, it will really help persons from other states. Like me, I'm coming all the way from Cross River State down here just to school. It's nice, I like it. I'm very grateful to His Excellency Dr. Senator Fanyokoa. He has brought development in this particular place and it has enabled some people who have been seeking for a lot of admission in other states to be able to gain admission. I finished my secondary school last year. I didn't bother going to any other state, so I just quickly get my admission and started studying. I've always wanted a school that is calm. This school is a free environment for learning. It makes me feel very happy, like I'm very excited. I like the school and then gave us a good opportunity to have admission to the school. Because you know nowadays school, how they give admission, is very good and I like the view. To ensure maximum gains from monies invested in these institutions, the governor made several unscheduled visits on site. This has kept contractors on their toes and executed projects to job specifications. Many stakeholders have interpreted the governor's style to his zeal and determination to ensure these institutions are up and running smoothly. The work that you see here is really progressed uh, quite a lot from the last time we visited, uh, where they were at BPC level uh, at the time we came. Where it's still my hope that they can progress a little faster so I can bring this to an end. So we need to invest more funds in education. There's no doubt about that. More funds in terms of infrastructure, more funds in terms of human resource, more funds in terms of equipment that is needed, and ensuring that we have full services in the internet for every university. I think it's important. With the many glowing testimonies of the contributions of the Okoa-led government to the improvement and standardization of the higher education system in the state, it is evident that the administration has demonstrated its commitment to leaving legacies that will outlast the administration and serve generations of Deltans. <laughs> The feedback segment. This week, we have a question from Azufu Nanya on our Instagram platform and it reads, Please, I would like to know when the new Dennis Osadebe University will start admitting students into Faculty of Environmental Sciences or have they started already? So Nanya, I can assure you that we are entering the second phase of our admission very soon for the six programs in six faculties. Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Agriculture, Faculty of Environmental Sciences, Faculty of Management and Social Sciences, Faculty of Computing, and Faculty of Science. We are working hard assiduously to make sure any specialization in Dennis Zaribe must be properly domesticated for the empowerment 
of human beings. I want to urge all the Deltans and all Nigerians and persons from across the world to continue to watch Smart Delta. They're doing so well. It's a good means of communication of what we do in Delta State. I'm quite excited that they've been getting the information out there. If you want to know a lot about what is going on in governance and development in Delta State, continue to watch Smart Delta. You will definitely be able to get all the information that you require. You better run, run, come. Come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okoa is they do you better. Run, come. Come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okoa is they do. I see your job and wealth creation in Delta. Make the youth set them higher. Okoa. I see good roads everywhere in Delta. Make the people set them cola. Okoa. Come live in Delta. Tell me I say. Come invest in Delta. Come explore the potentials of our state.